Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bish's RV in Twin Falls, Idaho, taking a look at a Grand Design Imagine 2600 RV. Comes in between 62 6300 pounds, which I think makes it a good fit for many tow package half tons. Now, opinions on towing, it's like towing uh, and, and the tow police, that's almost like a religion nowadays in today's world, but that's my personal opinion. I encourage you to find your own information and form your own opinions. Uh, what we're looking at here today is one of the most influential lightweights, potentially the most influential lightweight trailer potentially ever to hit the market. I've said the word potential potentially too many times. Um, it has a giant awning, a true queen bed, amazing storage solutions on this thing. Uh, the uh, the flooring is ventless uh, so that it's easy cleaning. We have uh, the same insulation package on here that you find on something like a reflection. She's ready for a TPMS. We've got Goodyear Endurance radials. But the, the feel, it has such a just almost Euro looking cabinet design on this that has an upscale look and feel that just sucks you in and just makes you want to be a part of it. Um, the more that I've seen of these, the more that I've learned about them, the more I've become excited about them. And I hope you feel the same way here. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things on this. Like they do some extra things around the seams and the seals to help prevent leaks, not just when it's new, but long-term. They have uh, extra PDI things that they do on this. Their customer service is legendary. If you've never had an RV before and you're looking for the last one ever, this is a brand that should maybe really be uh, on your radar here. And there's a couple things out there that I kind of consider retirement grade, and this might be among them. Uh, more and more, I'm impressed with what I see out of these guys. Now, uh, this floor plan is super common, and it's probably the most copied couples camping floor plan I've seen in the last uh, four or five years for sure. Uh, I'm going to tell you where I think it's awesome, where it falls short on a couple little places, because it does have a couple little hiccups that you're going to want to know about before you go dropping your money on this thing. And I would like to hear from you. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you would change. And make sure you hit that subscribe button to catch us on the next one, uh, in case this one isn't the right one for you. You never know what we have coming around the corner. And it, it's the combination of the lighter colors, that vaulted ceiling, and just a, an awesome lighting package. It gives this a nice, big open feel despite having only a single slide and notice how everything has just a little bit of a sheen and a shine to it with just enough little accents like uh within the slide uh look at the slide fascia they add that little kind of reflective stripe right there uh along with uh the the, the lighter wood tone right there and it, it just opens everything up they went with maximized windows on this one uh, sometimes grand design doesn't do that where it really seems that the divider line is if a seat or a, a big slide in a window is near a kitchen, then sometimes they'll go ahead and, uh, you know, include overhead cabinetry, which means a smaller uh, window. Um, whereas in a model like this, when the seating is not directly adjacent to the kitchen, they really just maximize the total space. Now, this RV has, I think, two Achilles heels that I want to make you aware of as we go. Uh, and I hope you appreciate how we point out those flaws or... Points of concern, as it were, not flaws, because there's there's nothing wrong with what they've done. But first of all, door side window coverage. You know, we have awesome big windows in the slide, but they're all over here on the uh, driver's side of the RV, because you can't just flip-flop the model. You can't just shove the entertainment center over here in the slide. It doesn't fit. The slide-out overlaps with the entry door. It doesn't work. Like, you can't just do that. But, uh, you know, that is one of two primary points of concern. But, like, if... But I always keep the shades drawn in my camper. I don't I don't want people looking in my trailer. I don't care what side of the camper the windows are on. I don't want people looking inside of it. So personally, that doesn't bother me. But what's your take on that? Now, I'd also like to give you a look a little bit past skin deep. So let's hop over here. First of all, some very cool modern looking little coat hooks. And I guess if you're not going to have an enclosed closet right here, that works, not to mention you have the shoe garage down below in a very logical location right next to the entry door. You know, that makes sense. Um, this has, uh, this has become super, super common, man. LCI has this all over a lot of RVs. The, uh, the, the command center right here. But you can also download the Compass Connect, which is uh, Grand Design's version of One Control. If you want to operate this stuff wirelessly, you can. And this RV is prepped for a TPMS that also talks to that thing. So you can have one app that does your TPMS slides, awning, monitor panels, all kinds of stuff in one spot. I'm going to call this the little hat 
bucket glove storage. It's just, it's an extra pocket. They didn't waste it, but I love how they still do the same hidden hinge cabinetry and just the, the clean look all the way through. Uh, you've noticed how the TV can pivot around. Now it could also pivot the other direction instead of looking toward the bathroom. <gasps> Wait a minute. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Yes. Yes. This is toilet TV certified, ladies and gentlemen. This is a big deal right there. Uh, anyway. <laughs> it just occurred to me. I didn't even think about it when I got in here. Never mind. Um, you can sit on the toilet and watch TV like I just tested in real time, mind you. I probably should have jumped away. Uh, regardless, this little drop down right here, it covers our stereo head unit. That's Bluetooth and, uh, you know, AM, FM. Um, but you notice how there's some power outlets in there. Infrared remote controls can still penetrate that glass, by the way, which is kind of cool. And this is effectively our pantry. It reminds me a lot of, J-Flight has done some similar things in a few models, but the the lower area down here is awesome the double big there's there's drawer space beyond compare in here and i love how the uh fuse panel is always smartly accessible in these but at the same time you know when you close the door and hide it away it's not in your face and annoying that's kind of what i've seen about that fuse panel by the way it's not, it's just, you don't see ugly mechanical things, you know? You got the double doggy drawers, as it were, down here below the large 12-volt fridge. What's cool about this, these little inserts are just that. If you don't want those there, you can easily take these out. But this is a really cool pet-friendly uh, design and feature that I have seen, I have seen everybody and their brother clone and knock off. What I haven't seen everybody and their brother clone and knock off in ultralights is... The extra thought and consideration in the kitchen storage that I'm seeing right here, like under, well, not just under the oven, under the oven and the countertop, this giant pull-out drawer. But you've got like, <laughs> you guys remember the light bright? Tell me that does not remind you of light bright pegs. You can kind of block that off in different ways. So if you've got big pots, big pans, you need a spice to hold the trays for the cookies and biscuits? Well... Sugar, you got the perfect spot to do it. <laughs> uh, the uh, cabinetry all pocket screwed lumber core, by the way. Now up top here, this is a small fan. It is a powered vent fan though. So if your interest is to put a bigger, more powerful fan in there, it's easy to do. And I'm telling you, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, the best thing available in those are Hangs Vortex fans. Look those up. They are high exhaust, inexpensive upgrade. We could pop those in lickety split for you. Now in this kitchen, there's two things I would personally do differently if I had the choice. I would try to find some way to put a side splash beside that stove because it seems like almost nobody does that. Please, somebody. If anyone's gonna do it, I feel like Grand Design is the company that has the dedication to make that happen. If anyone was gonna do it, please, these guys would be perfect. Uh, giant countertop extension. You see the larger farm sink there. And that is a one piece uh, roll away dish drying rack. But what's cool is if you want to only kind of flip it halfway open, you can make it like a split sink cover in a sense, you know. The other thing that I would personally change on this given the opportunity is I would like there to be space for a wastebasket there below the sink. But due to the fact that there is a heat vent running through there, I don't think that's physically possible. Now, I could find another place for a wastebasket. That's not gonna stop me from camping by any stretch. As long as we're looking at all the storage, I thought I'd show you everything here. Uh, I, I'd show you, we can get the table out of the way. It's free floating, it's elliptical. You can pull it in front of the theater seat and have a Dinofa movie night. And the rear bench of the dinette moves. <laughs> Move bench, get out the way. If you don't like it against the wall, you can take it out. You could anchor it down, you could use it like, oh, you could almost use it like a built-in pack and play if you wanted. You can see how there's storage doors below the dinette. You know, there's a couple different creative little ways that you can use stuff like that. And I would say you could kick it over here in front of the theater, see both theater recliners, you don't have to. However, if you opted for a hide-a-bed sofa, well then perhaps that little floating bench giving you a place to kick up your feet ain't so bad. Now, continuing forward, I think I'll go ahead and just continue on with the storage discussion. You look here under the bed. This is a true queen 60 by 80 bed, by the way. It is easy lift. You see how it's a full separated storage trunk below. It doesn't 
like mingle with the pass through as it were. But this reminds me of something Open Range was doing years ago. That little sliding storage drawer right there. It's just one more storage solution if you don't like it. I mean, pff, nothing says you, you gotta use it. Take it out of there. But it's, it's all the rest of the storage around this bed that just takes it over the top for me. Like the double dresser drawers here. Um, I love the headboard side pockets under those overhead cabinets. You've got household and USB plugs on both sides of the bed and you still maintain a normal side hanging closet. Also, with the Ural hardware they're using on these overhead doors, um, they hold themselves open without struts. So I'm not doing some kind of Harry Potter, Osseo, Levioso magic spell on this thing or anything like that. But the thing is, all that things like the, the different hardware, all the extra drawer hardware, the time that it takes to build those, it all adds up a little bit. Imagines are not the least expensive ultralight out there. A lot of people can argue, though, they're one of the, the most effective, well-thought-out lightweights. And I think that their success in the marketplace certainly supports that idea. But when it's not all blown apart, tell me that does not have, I mean, that has a good look. Um, if we're going to be hypercritical, you do have to kind of climb into the bed. It's not a full walk-around bed, but what RV is truly a full walk-around bed? That's not a normal thing. Also, that headboard, that's not like a, a, a wall. That's actually a little padded, almost like curtain. And consider the fact, oh, I, I, I mean... Here's something. It doesn't have a windshield. I get that a lot of people like a windshield, but consider this. The R value of an RV window is 0 0.7. Basically nothing. Basically nothing. Well, that's like having a magnifying glass right above your head. And I get the windshields. Oh my lord, they have the Smex appeal. They have the curb appeal. They look incredible. And certainly there are some folks who say yes, but if I hear a bump in the night, I like to be able to look outside real quick. Okay, acknowledged. There's plenty of RVs that have the front windshields for you. Um, you know what? Cougar has a 26 RBS. It's a very similar floor plan to this. Has a front windshield. Has a king bed. If those are interesting things for you, check that out. But this is a serious bedroom climate control benefit that is just standard across the board on these. Not to mention um, <clears throat> privacy. <whistles> Case... You're ever um, aggressively folding laundry uh, in the bedroom. Now, working our way back out of here. Once again, that TV on that pivoting mount. So if you want to, you know, watch from the dinette. Um, again, we found out if you want to watch TV from the toilet. Uh, frankly, I think the only places you can't watch TV uh, on this RV are from the roof and under the belly. <laughs> Everything else has some kind of method. Now, by the way, you might look at this and go, uh... How is that a U dinette when the table goes all the way up against the wall? Remember, this table floats. It, it's it's whatever dinette you want it to be, which is really cool. Now let's dive into this uh, seating arrangement a little bit for you here. So first of all, it's heat and massage. Boom, nice. Secondly, it's a wall hugger and it has a little center remote control storage armrest in the middle there. Boom, double nice. And finally, the fable Dinofa arrangement. If you want to sit there, like Back to the Future. Yeah, look at him roll. We can watch Jackie Gleason while we eat. Did, whoa, whoa. Did I sound a little bit like Peter Griffin from Family Guy? Like, hey, hey Lois. Yeah, we can watch Jackie Gleason while we eat. <laughs> Does anyone even know what I'm talking about? Sorry. Uh, me going off on tangents again. Let's talk fluffy friendly this bathroom is all of that tons of leg room around here now uh not only that huge countertop frankly um it makes the sink look pathetically small it isn't a you know two adult size hands can fit in there now granted i've got skinny chicken fingers if you've actually got big man hands that i don't have i've got little lady fingers well, maybe that's a little small for it. It really feels like they could have gone a little bit bigger here, though. But the counter space, that is awesome. And let's check out some storage here. This is one of those things, I wanted to make sure I got this, like, double vanity open. Um, now, I will tell you, if you're like me, I don't want to look at myself in the shower. I'd probably leave these doors open when I was in the shower. I don't want to look over and see my wet, ugh, naked self in the mirror. Ugh, not my thing. Not my thing. No thanks. Frankly, if I could, I'd take a shower with the lights off, but I'm already clumsy enough as it is. 
big old drawer big old drawer and in case you're wondering you look in a lot of rvs this isn't just green design you go where's there's no place for a toilet paper holder they ship these loose we can install these for you wherever you'd like them um but uh it seems like no matter where a factory puts them they're in quote the wrong spot as it were you know where would you put that where would you mount the toilet paper in this giant space under the sink that's the kind of space i wish was under the kitchen for wastebasket but again with that heat run i do understand why they can't and i am so sad why why do we have to put signs like this on the toilet what you know actually no I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know the real answer to that question. Regardless, one of those nice, I think 30 by 36 showers. Um, and uh, I see Imagine do this quite a bit. I'm not personally a fan. Again, I'll tell you what I like, what I dislike. It's just an opinion though. Um, I don't like open storage. Now with the window treatment here, I totally get how you can't put a door on the top one, but I really kind of would have liked some kind of door uh, down here. And in case you're wondering about privacy, you have the same blackout shades here that you have the rest of the area of the RV. So you can totally, totally maximize your privacy. Now I told you this RV has two Achilles heels. One being a lack of door side windows, which is unavoidable with this type of layout. The other is when you close the slide, say goodbye to that bedroom. See what I mean? Um, again, that's a problem that almost anybody who builds this floor plan has. Some builders will put a door directly into the bedroom. Some people like that. Some people don't. Obviously, Imagine doesn't. But what I like is, other than that, and granted, that's a serious point of consideration for some people, all of our kitchen stuff, uh, all those drawers, the fridge, all that remains available. And if I back up and I'm going to spin you around like a record, baby, real slow so as to not make you motion sick... There, you don't even got to do a half sideways travel trailer two-step to get in here in the uh, the bathroom. So if you do need to make a quick travel stop, you can do it. If you need to make a sleepover stop, you got to make sure you park where you can open the slide. It just, it starts right off. These things have a dynamite look. I call them Kathleen head turners. Although I've noticed that my references as I've aged have become uh, more and more increasingly at it. Well... That was a good example of the motion lighting that exists in the pass-through compartment. I didn't bank on that, but hey, buddy, I'll take it. Uh, the <laughs> power tongue jack doing the heavy lifting for us so you don't got to get tennis elbow when you're properly hitching up your weight distribution system. And if you don't know what I mean, you've either never camped or you don't know how to properly hook up your weight distribution system, and we can help you with that. So you've got, uh, I call it the quilted northern uh, stone guard up front. Cougar does something very similar, a couple of the keystones. Where I like this is they extend it up even further with like a, a bed liner almost spray on guard to protect that painted nose cap. Um, and it, it just, again, anything that can help it last with less headache and less worry, I'm a fan of. Huge, huge mungus pass-through compartment in here as well. Notice that handy little power outlet right there in case you want to run something like my daughter loves the bubble machine. And frankly, I do too. It's fun to run around and be young and dumb and play with the kiddos there's that motion light kicking on both sides of the pass through have those by the way we are also prepped and ready for the tpms system which talks to the uh the the compass connect uh lci one control kind of job now up top on the roof you're going to see 165 watt solar panel what you're seeing right there that black box is a Furion 50 amp charge controller which means it can suck some serious juice. So if you wanted to add extra panels, call our team, let us know. We can get you quotes on stuff like that. And it's also an MPPT controller, meaning basically it just gets you more juice without getting too technical. Um, it's a simple but effective docking station. It gets the job done. You see the blue coily sprayer hose over there, technical term, mind you. Um, that connects here to the hot, cold outside shower if you are so inclined. Now down here in the underbelly, we are enclosed, we are forced air heated, we have a radiant barrier, and uh, that radiant barrier actually wraps all the way up the nose cap and then across the roof as well. Now down below here, did you notice up front how there's not a sewer dump? There is a gray tank pull for, uh, I believe, the kitchen gray tank. Now back here, you have a bathroom gray as well as a bathroom black, but they managed to get it all hooked together so that you have a single termination point. That is not something most manufacturers are typically able to pull off. It's the kind of thing that a lot of people, when they're shopping for RVs, they don't realize, they don't think about, they never consider. It's a super handy feature here, you know. 
Now, uh, you can see how we've got uh, power stabilizer jacks here on the uh, full Imagine series. Whereas in like the uh, the XLS, you've got a little bit different uh, kind of manual, uh, not scissor jack, I, do, I don't know, drop down jack leg thing, whatever, you get the idea. They're not power jacks. The Big Brother Full Imagine that we're looking at though, it gets a couple of those little niceties, those little updates. But look at the awning on this thing. That's, it's massive. I mean, it, it's, it has a center support, it's huge. Uh, but one point of personal uh, preference and criticism that I have, I am not personally a fan of speakers mounted really up high on the walls. I really prefer that stuff to be down lower. I'd rather it be somewhere down here or even mounted in the skirting if possible. Just because, you know, if you're thinking about it, if you're looking at this, if you're at a campsite, you're blaring the speakers directly at whoever's next to you over here, you know. There's just... Only so much you can do with it. Um, and again, we're, we're prepped and ready for TPMS and pardon the mud on the tires. It just is what it is with the indoor display, but it's freezing outside at the time I record this, so I'm not complaining. Goodyear Endurance Radials, 87 mile an hour rated. Please don't ever drive that fast. And a couple things to show off here on the roof. Um, the uh, 165 watt roof solar panel, like I said, uh, standard on these so that you can uh, help keep the, the batteries topped off. Very handy when the battery's in storage. What a lot of people don't realize is that when the RV's in storage, there's always a little trickle draw and parasitic load. Sometimes, even if a battery disconnect is flipped, it depends on how that RV is wired, there might still be a pull and a draw off that battery. Um, that, that solar panel will more than cover any of that. Now, if you are real serious about boondocking, this has that 12 volt fridge. The 50 amp charge controller that they have on these is enough where if you wanted to expand your solar, you could compensate for that refrigerator. Uh, and right here, the attic vent, what that's doing is it's basically keeping you from scalding your scalp. And if there's someone who knows about scalding their scalp, scalp, scalding their scalp, why do you even, you guys even watch me? I don't know. Anyway, and scene. If there's someone who knows about scalding their scab, oh my gosh! Take number 37, uh, go. Okay, if there's someone who knows about scalding their scalp, nailed it, first try, that would definitely be me. I'm standing under a radiant heater as I flub my way through this about 67 times. Um, what I'm getting at, the roof construction of this RV, instead of turning into an oven, it helps breathe out that heat. And, and keep in mind, in the roof construction is where all of the ducting for the central air system is. If that box, the roof structure is too hot, then the air conditioning is not going to work as effectively because the cool air in the ducts has already been warmed up a little before it dumps down into your living room. So that little, little things like roof air ducts like that, it can seriously keep the roof of an RV, the inside of the roof of an RV, something like 40 to 50 degrees cooler it's a massive swing that is not a it's a little feature it's a big deal though now remember if you'd like to check for pricing and availability you can find that from any of our vicious location via the link in the locations plural grammar police hello uh in the link in the video description and please again let me know what you think about it good bad ugly and in between just like i've done so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone